What's going on guys? Aaron here from Curls in the Rack. Today I want to do another product review video. And this time it's going to be on the Titan Fitness Viking Press version 2. Uh, we'll go over some exercises that it's beneficial for and then we'll also go uh, over some exercises that people claim you can use it for but really you might want to stick to your standard dumbbells or barbells for those lifts. Anyways, uh, let's get started. All right, guys, first a close-up look at the product. This is how it came shipped from Titan. Uh, I will say the two plastic end caps on the end were all smashed in. I had to kind of pry them out, but they actually gave me a discount on that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's got a black powder-coated finish. The welds are, you know, okay from a Chinese-made facility. You got the tab to tighten it down onto the sleeve of your barbell. And some more welds over on the sides. Uh, so the grips, the outer grips, the two inner grips are all six and a half inches around. Uh, you got five inches between each of the two handles on each side. You got nine inches in between the handles in the middle, we'll call that the headspace. Uh, and then the whole thing is 26 and a half inches wide. You got 15 inches from the attachment that goes onto the sleeve of your barbell all the way to the back. We'll call that the length. And uh, that's basically it. Hopefully you can get a, uh, a good idea of uh, what you're going to be getting here. And it weighs 17 pounds. All right, guys, now that we got those specifications out of the way, we're going to go through a few different exercises on this thing. I'm going to determine if I like the exercise actually on the Viking press attachment or if I would rather do them with a dumbbell or a barbell. So I'll talk a little bit about that, whether I think you should do it with this or with something else. All right guys, so with the deadlift, um, I didn't necessarily like it as much as I would like just doing a regular barbell deadlift. I mean, I guess if this is your only option, this might be a good way to go. But the angle of pull is really weird because as I lift through that range of motion, the barbell is kind of coming up at this angle. It's coming up and back. So the taller you get to, um, logic stands to reason that when you stand up, it's going to lift more and more and more back that way, right? And that angle is just going to increase even more and more and more. Um, and what I found is it was starting to pull me onto my toes a little bit. Um, so just be aware that that'll start to happen. If I had my choice, I would probably stick with doing um, barbell deadlift or to replicate if you wanted to get um, that same kind of like neutral grip or, or something like that on a deadlift, go with a hex bar um, or maybe go with a couple dumbbells or something like that. I think that would work a lot better than this, um, but it's doable. All right, guys, so with the squat on this one, um, I can see where the benefit could come in, but I also see a lot more reasons why I would not like it than anything else. So what I felt with this one when I was trying to squat is that the main thing was that this bar is going to end up pushing you back into your heels while you're going through those squats, right? So literally as I'm going through this, I feel like my weight is literally being pushed back into my heels at the end of that range of motion or at the bottom of that range. Um, which I guess if you were having issues with your squat coming into your toes, this might be a good way to train yourself to really focus on getting your weight back towards your heels. But for a really ideal squat, you neither want your, your weight in your toes or in your heels. You really want your weight pressing through the center of your foot like you're stepping on a, a can of like soda or something or an empty can, like you're crushing it beneath your foot. That's where you want your weight to be, not in your heels not in your toes. So be careful of doing this too much as you might start to take bad habits into your regular barbell squat. And when you squat down, you might have that habit of going too far back and falling backwards. So there's also claims out there that you can do an overhead squat on this attachment. Um, I've tried it a little bit. I've tried to play around with it. To be honest, I do not like it at all. Um, when you go and, and load up for that overhead squat, you, you're really limited to these grips right in here, right? And on an overhead squat, you wanna get that snatch grip, right? So you're really wide with your hands. On this one, the widest I can get is right about here. 
and I'm going to come up with that, that uh, attachment here and then start going back into my overhead squat. Um, and I just feel like I'm really straining my back on that because I'm unable to um, rotate my armpits forward and keep my chest up like I would need to on an overhead squat, right? This one, I'm right here, unable to rotate those armpits. Out here, same thing. I really can't get any rotation on the armpits to keep that chest wide and get into that good overhead squat position. Plus, it's pushing me back too, which I'm having to use my back to stabilize and try and drive my chest up, right? Alright guys, so we're going to talk a little bit about pulling with this one, um, doing any type of row. I would prefer to be on this side of the barbell rather than be over on this side. Um, and my reason for that is when I'm doing like a, a T-bar row, right, when I get like my V-grip attachment and I'm pulling here, I'm utilizing the biggest muscles of my back, right? I'm using, I'm pulling to my, my stomach, which is really the big difference on this one. Um, I'm pulling here rather than when I switch around on the barbell and I'm pulling from here, I can't pull to my stomach back. I have to pull up almost out this way, which is utilizing the muscles of my upper back rather than using my whole back, right? So I'm gonna be able to get less weight on the bar um, than I would if I was on the other end. So just to show you guys what that would look like here, stand up and pull, right? I'm kind of limited with my range of motion. Versus being on this side of the bar, and pulling here, right? Now obviously, the benefit on that side is that I can go with a wide grip. It's hard to get a wide grip attachment on this side. You're kind of limited to doing that V grip um, and grabbing here or just grabbing the barbell itself. Um, but if you're looking to train solely upper back, maybe that would be a good uh, way to train it. So just so you guys know, there are other versions of this attachment too um, that don't have this inner part of the grip right here in this part. So really what you're working with is just these outer handles here. And that would enable you to do a lot more exercises like reverse lunges. Um, you could probably work your deadlifts a lot better with that. You'd still have that awkward angle of pull, but you would be able to center yourself more in the middle of the bar um, and lift from there. This one kind of blocks you to where all I can work with is by being pretty much with my head right here or being on the front of the bar unable to step into this area here. Alright guys, so I've also seen the claim that you can do a floor press with this attachment. I'm going to do it for demonstration purposes here. I don't recommend that you guys actually do this with this attachment at home just because doing this I'm already starting to feel it flare up in my shoulder a little bit. Um, but the things I do for you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and go for this floor press here. Um, you guys can see that at the angle that I'm pressing, it's kind of the same issue of the deadlift, where when I press down here, I'm forward, but then as I come up, I'm pressing way back and it's coming right over my shoulders, right? Like I'm way too high. If I wanted to scoot back a little further, now I'm worried that if this thing drops, because the little bolt that secures this thing to the actual barbell itself isn't super secure all the time, if it launches forward, this is right above my face, and I really feel like this would come down and just crush my head like a watermelon. So, um, you could get a better range of motion from here, but that risk to reward isn't necessarily worth it to me. Um, so I would recommend going um, with just a regular floor press rather than trying this thing. Alright guys, so let's get into the bread and butter of this attachment. So, with this one, it's really built for uh, pressing with the shoulders, right? So doing any type of overhead press variation. Um, you can do strict overhead press with this one. The issue that I would find is that when I get underneath and I load, I'm not able to press through the center of my body here and really bring that bicep to the ear like you would focus on a good strict overhead press where you come right here. I wanted to do that, I have to lean forward into my toes just like that, right? I'm just creating bad habits for myself. I'm kind of leaning forward. It's just not a good position to be in. But what I would like to use this one for um, is doing different variations for explosive training, like a push press, for example, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and drive through the legs and push up, down, and up. With that one, I can train that explosiveness, that speed, and that power that's really needed for those, uh, those power training movements, right? That push press is a good one. I would supplement with this. 
but I wouldn't let my, my entire training be focused for overhead press around this attachment. I would much rather start with a barbell, hit my standing overhead press, and then maybe as a finisher, I would come over here and go ahead and hit a set or two um, or three of push press, right? And finish off with that. All right, guys, so another exercise that I found that I really like would be the core lateral rotations that you can do with this. Now, a lot of people usually do this just with the barbell, and they'll just come here and come around just like that, right? I found that with this attachment, I can plus, place a lot more emphasis on the core, um, and I can focus on the core muscles a lot more, and this feels a lot harder than when I do it with just the, the regular barbell. So I'm, I'm grabbing these grips here, I'm just doing the same mechanics of coming around, and back up. Make sure you clear enough space on both sides. I mean guys, there's only 10 pounds on this bar right now, but um, I mean, it, it feels heavy. So this is a good attachment. All right guys, so this also comes with this pair of uh, channel locks because you're gonna need those things to adjust the weight. So make sure if you take this to the gym with you, bring these, have them in your back pocket. People will think you're weird, but no, seriously though, this thing is extremely hard to to tighten and to untighten. And if you don't tighten it all the way and you're doing some sort of movement, it'll slip right out. So that would be bad, especially if you're under a heavy load. But the other thing is that when you tighten it up super hard, like you have to have it, like see, I have it on there super tight, it still slipped off the bar. So you really gotta use two hands, tighten this thing up. See, not even on there yet. There go. Nope. There you go, finally. 10 minutes. So your whole rest time is taken by uh, tightening this thing. And also, you better have a bar that you don't really care about because this thing will chew into the sleeve of your bar. So if you have a really nice, expensive uh, barbell that you care about, this thing's gonna dig right in and ruin that thing. So just another thing to keep in mind when buying this. All right guys, there you have it. Our take on the Titan Fitness Viking Press version two. Would I buy this product in the future? Uh, I would, for 45 bucks, and sometimes you can get uh, discounts on there. They go all the way up to like 25% off on Titan's website. Uh, I would buy this product. Are there some improvements that could be made? Yeah, maybe a bigger you know, pin so it's easier, or some other thing that Titan could make for, uh, to lock the bar onto there. Maybe something a little bit more forgiving for your barbell. Uh, there are some improvements that could be made, but overall this is a good product for 45 bucks. Would I use it to do all of the exercises that were described uh, it could be used for? No, not this particular one. There's no space in the middle of it. There's, it's, it's not a viable option. But for finishing work, like some uh, push presses and uh, core work, I definitely would get this bar. All right guys, if you liked the video, be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe because we're gonna have new product reviews coming very soon. Uh, any comments in the comment section would be appreciated. Some things that we did well, some things that we could do differently in the future. And if you guys are looking for some free workouts, you can go over to curlsintherack.com. We've got a ton of stuff there and also apparel. Peace out. Have a nice day.